Good evening and welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner's meeting of August 7, 2024. It's 6.02 p.m. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. This meeting will be held in the main, uh, in person in the main meeting room of Deerfield Municipal Offices in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A. Anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk, Blake Gilmore, and provide their name and address for the record. So call the meeting to order, and at this time there's uh, an opportunity for two minutes of public comment from people who have anything to bring to the select board's attention. Mr. Bechta. I'm not so, two things for Yep. <laughs> for the people in the audience. <laughs> okay. So two things would be uh, Eastern Avenue. First of all is the status of the sewer replacement. I understand the bid is way over. Yeah and that's kind of stalled right now and the second being my thing from back in the spring about the, the ditch thing so what is the status with the sewer and the pavement yep so the sewer we held off that we, we just didn't accept any bids because it was twice the cost so we hope to go back out to bid this fall um, we're hoping a more favorable environment we only had one bid and it was twice what we expected on, you know just unaffordable and then um, I was going to talk with Chris a bit because there are some sections I think that could be uh, a lot of the a lot of this is around paving too like it's been a mess for too many years so I was going to try and talk with Chris and the engineers to see if anything could be paved before like I know there were some sections that weren't going to get done or maybe we we're going to line so even if we can get some of that done before uh, winter would be great uh, ran into Kevin Scarborough the other day he suggested you guys talk to the engineer because he believes that the replacement pieces could probably be put off for a few more years and also the money is there for the pavement project correct so the from Sugarloaf to Cross Street uh, was just going to be lined so paving those right. parts wouldn't be an wouldn't issue. Wouldn't be an issue. Correct. And then if you paved the rest of it now from Cross Street up to the end is not that bad. Right. It's just it's the other such part. a hellhole from Sugarloaf to Cross Street and Absolutely. You know, there's dozens and dozens of potholes and yep. you know the filled potholes besides that, but we still have potholes. So the point that residents are now bringing dirt in and filling these potholes themselves, okay. which is also going on in other parts of town. That just didn't yep. get done this spring. Right. Right. And so that's that we so okay. if that's a possibility and we can at least get the the lower ends of both streets paved. I'll get back before, to you. On that so yeah, I sure. appreciate that. And yep. then the other part was the how are we coming on the So um, my understanding is that Chris Miller has it on the uh, has the uh, digging out of the swales in the the fall um, work plan. Okay. And Casey can correct me if I'm wrong. He wants the ground to be firmer, possibly at, uh, like when the first frost comes so that the soil is easier to, to manipulate. Um, I was on Eastern Ave the other day with um, the Conservation Commission Chair Pete Law because there's been some runoff up there. Um, I don't know if it's mm. significant amounts of silt and everything coming off various properties. Um, the culverts up there are like a half full um, law and, and I are in the process of talking to Chris Miller about seeing how we can whether we can blow any of that out um, but they are digging along the roadside to recreate the roadside swale that channels the water keeping it off the roadside and pushing it into the the culvert system so that should alleviate some of the soil that's collecting up, up there um, I think some residents maybe did some work on the mountainside without asking for authorization and it's caused a great erosion problem mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure what we what we have the authority to do about that at this point but we are aware that it's an issue um, and 
so we'll keep monitoring it. Okay. Are you still needing me to bring that letter around I to residents? I well, think. Go ahead, Casey. Case. No, please. Sorry. Casey has the answer. Uh, what I was going to do is use that what you had framed and put it in the context of being provided by the town. I think Kevin used to do that when he would notify people. Um, and then we can get it out to people. And certainly, if you have any questions, you're welcome, or they have any questions, you're welcome to come to the board and ask. But we're, without some framework of a timeline, I c it doesn't, it may not make sense to send a letter out right now because people will have lots of questions we won't be able to answer. So um, Chris Miller and I had talked about waiting a little while and then making sure it, com it came out from the town. Okay. Okay. Does that so they knew it was reasonable? an official communication. Yeah. Because it's, you, you know, you're talking the fall for this, but the water table is coming back up with some of these storms that we've had. Yeah. Um, no, it's evident water. with me trying to get my, my cellar floor poured. We're seeing the sure. water come, so we're hoping to get it done a little quicker than that. But as long as we can get it done this year, and the paving too, I would, you know, say thank you very much. So. Yep. Um, um, Fred, thanks. All right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank keep, you. keep us honest, Fred. Yep. Nobody has to. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, is there anybody online who has a comment they'd like to make? Anyone else in the audience? Um, okay, so um, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to take care of uh, this opportunity to take care of minutes before we have a Verizon poll petition hearing. So, how far down are these? Well, I can make a motion if you want. Yeah, I'll let you. So, make a motion to approve the minutes of January 10th, 2024. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Elmer, abstain. Tim Hilchey, aye. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for. Uh, January 24th, 2024, which is an MVP slash select board meeting. Second. Um, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Blake Gilmore, abstain. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, MVP select board minutes for April 10th, 2024. Second. Uh, any discussion? Nope. Hearing none. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore abstain. Tim Hilchey, aye. I'll make a motion to approve the select board minutes for J uh, July 10th, 2024. Second. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. All right, okay. well, that's good. Get those out of the way. Yep. Um, yeah, we could do the state. You want to do the state primary, Tim? It's two pages next. On your oh, next next item. On your oh, under here. Yeah, look, oh, at, your look at that. All right. Everything you want in the frame. Mm. Keep going. It's mm. page seven. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. I'm sorry. Page six. Page six. Page six. Okay, so um, I move to approve the Commonwealth of Massachusetts 2024 state primary warrant as presented. Second. So. You want to talk to this briefly? Essentially, this is the primary warrant um, for the the warrant. Sorry, that has to be posted identifying um, who is on the ballot for the primary this coming September third. And yes, I am sorry. We have a very large packet. Yeah, sorry. Um, it takes a while to get through some of this stuff. Who's up for re-election? So if you read through it, uh, there's a senator in Congress, a representative in Congress. A counselor in the 8th Counselor District, Senator in the General Court for Hampshire Franklin and Worcester District, Representative in General Court for the 1st Franklin District, uh, the Clerk of Courts in Franklin County, and the Register of Deeds in Franklin District. Yep. All right, and um, how many places do we have to sign here? Just, I think just one. Do you have one in there? The election is the third oh, there you day go. of September gotcha. from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. And there is a signature. There's several copies because we have to post them. Yeah. Okay. So is there any further discussion? Um, hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. 
Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. I'll we'll take the time to sign these things. as I go along. Mine is just sloppy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not saying mine's good. <laughs> just gets worse as the more I do it. Okay. Yeah. That's good. And then while you while you're signing, I'll um, yes. What's next? The, uh, the these are the um, appointments of election officers for the elections coming up, um, and so there are there are kind of three categories of, of um, election officers in, in the Democrat, Republican, and unenrolled uh, parties. So uh, I move to approve the following election officers for a term of office from September 1st, 2024 through August 31st, 2024. Is that 2025? Well, I was just going to ask that. Yeah, that yeah. must be 2025, right? 2020, yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, so let Sorry. me correct that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I move to a to approve the following election officers for the term of office from September 1st, 2024 through August 31st, 2025, pursuant to general laws, chapter 54, section 12, as presented. Second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Uh, Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. And I would just want to extend a thank you to all the people stepping up to, uh, to serve in this election season. There's a lot going on this year and really, really helpful to our clerk and the town and everybody to, um, to have your assistance. And do we have to sign anything on that, Casey, or just no. the motion no. is good? Okay. Thank you. Um, Okay, so do we have time to do anything else, Casey? What time is it? We've got five, five minutes. minutes. I think we can do that. Um, we could probably do that. Uh, do you think, I don't know how long you think it'll take. Um, well, have both of you had a chance to look at the yep. the two letters about the horse? No. Okay. Um, maybe is it in the back? I guess we'll there. wait on that. Yeah. Is it in the back? It is. Okay. Yeah, it's back towards the back. Oh, you know what you could do? Remember John asked for an item yeah, unanticipated? Let's, let's do the appointment. So there is, if you go all the way to the end of the packet, um, I actually put a little note in that had item unanticipated, which actually has the language for the motion. Mr. McDaniel. <laughs> I'm just looking. All the way. I gotta hear. Keep um, going. It's past your all right, it's I can not do in this. there. I forgot to so, put it. Okay, it's in here. All right, yep. Item, un item unanticipated. Chief yeah. Chark has requested that we appoint Deborah Austin as a part time administrative assistant at the rate of $31.01 per hour, effective July 1. 2024 through June 30, 2025, uh, so and he, yes, well, yes, so we'll, is there a second? Second. All right, um, before we do that, I'll read the letter. Uh, Honorable Select Board from John Pachor, Jr., Annual Police Appointments, August 5th, 2024. Dear Honorable Board, one additional reappointment that I inadvertently left off the annual reappointment list, Deborah Austin, part-time administrative assistant, back up to Cassie Jerome with the same rate she receives while working for Brenda um, Hill in the Accountants Department, $31.01. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, she, all those in favor? She was the, uh, she worked for John before. She was yes, the, she was, she was, she's pre, coming in part-time now? Yeah, yep, to okay. fill in for Cassie when she has vacation time. And, Got it. Yep. So she's very familiar with the operation and uh, happy to have her help. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was shocked to see her in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, uh, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. 
Thank and you. Thanks, Thank Deb, you. for agreeing to do that. Great. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I think I can. Can I read this poll hearing announcement yes. before yes. we start? Yes, certainly may. Yep. Okay. So. Pursuant to General Laws, Chapter 166, Section 22, and any additions thereto or amendments thereof, the Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing on August 7, 2024, at 6.20 p.m. in a hybrid fashion, both at the town offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, and via Zoom, on the petition of Verizon, Inc., uh, Verizon New England, Inc., to erect a line of poles, wires, and fixtures upon Upper Road and Stillwater Road in Deerfield as presented in the petition and petition plans. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of Deerfield Municipal Offices. Uh, <clears throat> a Zoom connection has been provided and that's noted on the town website. So... Um, the hearing open? Me. And do we have a motion? Well, yes. So, the, yeah, we can talk about uh, this. So, um, so I move that, uh, to grant permission for Verizon New England, Inc., and NSTAR Electric Company, DBA, Eversource Energy, to locate poles, wires, cables, and all associated fixtures as necessary in the public ways as requested in the petition documents. Is there a second? Second. So, so is there anybody present from Verizon that... I, online or oh, great. very Wonderful. good. Wonderful. Come on up. Just introduce your name and where are you from? Sure. Uh, Don Vonner with Verizon. Okay. Uh, can, and wanna read can you speak a little closer to the mic? Uh, sure. That mic might be... Uh, we're, we're technologically challenged. Thank you. Yep, that one works. So uh, I don't want to rehash everything you just had yep. to read. So okay. um, uh, essentially, I just went out to visit the site. I, I was looking for stakes. I was looking to confirm the measurements for you. Unfortunately, there's only two stakes in place right now. Yep. Um, I, I don't know why. Um, but I checked the measurements. Uh, the two stakes that are there, they do check out yep. to be approximately where they should be. The other ones, I think they might not be there because there's poles in place where they probably would be right now and they're probably going to be replacing those poles. Um, and as, uh, I'm not sure if you read the reason or not. I did. Okay. So the I had a question. Sure. So, so just for the public, there are uh, five poles. So this is for the work for the Stillwater Bridge that's going to take place. Um, Mass DOT is replacing the Stillwater Bridge. So on the... Um, on the south side, uh, there will be five poles right across from the entrance to the bridge. And then on the north side, on the left side, um, people know there's a little pull-in area. Just past that on the left, there'll be a pole placed there as well. My question for the five poles, are they going to be temporary during the work and then come down after, or will these be permanent forever? I believe these are going to be permanent. Okay. Um, and there's several of them relatively close because uh, in my estimation they want the infrastructure to be in place before anything happens on the work yeah yeah i was just curious why so many in that I mean, five right in a row it, it looks tight but the measurements are actually pretty pretty spaced out with the exception of the two at the end of the bridge yeah uh, those are fairly close only about 25 feet apart but i think that's because they need to go in two different directions. Okay. All right. And then the other one's pretty self-explanatory across the road. I mean, across the bridge and heading up the hill there. Yeah. Just before lower road takes off to the right, it's on the left side of the road. So that would be a normal layout for any type of a situation where you've, you've got to 
uh, wires going in two different directions. You'd have the, the two poles close together and then they'd spread out to the other poles? Yeah, to be honest, I, I, I don't know if it's a normal. Uh, I, I, this is the way the engineers drew it up. Uh, mm -hmm. And the mass dot engineers too. So I uh, okay. don't really have a, a, a lay on what they were trying to do or what their intention was. I'm trying to give you my best estimate yeah. from, from what I've seen in the field. Okay. And again, I, I probably missed this, but um, is this work slated to begin, or is it, is it uh, in conjunction with the uh, bridge project, or? I imagine it's going to be before the bridge project, mm -hmm. um, so that they can have the infrastructure in place. Okay. Uh, I don't know the timeline, but as soon as I get home tonight, I will let them know. Hopefully, it's been approved, okay. and, and uh, they can send crews out when they need to. Sounds good. One side note question. Um, we usually only have poll hearings on town of Deerfield stuff. I noticed several polls went in on five and ten. I assume that was state, right? You'd have poll hearings with the with the state versus the town of Deerfield. If it was on the state highways, state highway. yes. Okay. We would just need to permit clarify. that. I saw those go in just But I think it's a courtesy on I mean, it could be that we had uh, they considered um, some of those poles were on Wapping Road or something, but yeah. there were poles replaced there. But we were notified. Yeah. Um, okay. So all the abutters notices went out, Casey. Yes. Okay. We sent we sent out. So what what they do is they send us postcards and we put the dates and times of the hearing and we sent yep. those out. I have the date. It's actually in the folder that he has, but mm -hmm. I have the date they went out. Any any questions from the public? Anybody on uh, online have a question? I would then, if not, I would make a motion to close the hearing. Second. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchi, aye. And then I would I would make a motion to approve the um, to approve the uh, polls locations. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchi, aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yep. All right. So we're early for Chris Dunn. He's not on yet. Do you want to text him? Do you want me to? Yeah, see if, okay, he, see if he can come early. And um, if he can't, we'll. I think. Uh, Okay, Denise, since you're having trouble hearing us too, can't hear you at all. All right, can you hear me now? Which uh, is Denise? Uh, Denise, yeah. Oh, she's right in the oh, audience. There she is. <laughs> so, can you? Can you, you can't hear even me? hear us here. Did you uh, uh, turn it up? There's three of them. You got to speak up. <laughs> <laughs> Have you checked your hearing aids, yeah, you too. Denise? Did you check your hearing aids? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, can you hear any of us? Now, now they can, I think. Yeah, now they can. All right, sorry about that. I made the motion. Yeah, exactly. We, like, I went right here. <laughs> Speak into the microphone, but uh, we obviously don't read well. Late seconded, yes. I second. Yep. Again. Um, yep. Yeah. All right, there you go. Oh. I'm just writing a note. Pat has it. Or I have it with the two of us. Did you text Christopher? Not yet. When I will. It's, oh, you okay. Thank you. Oh, wait. Hold on. He texted back. If not, did we you can, text him? Yeah, I did. If not, we can have Allison come up and... Yeah, and Sunny Days to see the two. Right. Yeah. All right. Do that if you want. Let's do that. 
Which one do you want? Allison, why don't yeah. you come up and... This mic, right? Yes, yes. I believe yes. So. <laughs> Hi everyone, Allison Maisley here from Treehouse. Welcome. Welcome. Thank How are you. you tonight? Not too bad. Not too bad. It's Wednesday. It's not raining. I'll take what I get. <laughs> right. So, um, why don't you, for the for the people in attendance, give us a brief yes understanding of what you'd like to why I'm here. All talk right. About. So, um, I apologize for the light reading I sent you all this morning. <laughs> um, as you are aware, over the Last eight months, I've been working very closely with public safety and different agencies throughout the state to address our emergency action plan. And part of that ties into our half marathon event, which is happening on September 15th. That is a Sunday. Um, one of the missing puzzle pieces to that event is to apply for DOT permission to use the roads for the purposes of the half marathon. Along with that DOT permission in that application or in tandem with that application, we will apply for official approval to use the north curb cut mm -hmm. as a temporary emergency egress if needed. We will also have no on-site parking, so the main driveway will also be available for an emergency egress. Um, but I figured if we can have both, let's have both. Um, mm -hmm. We'll put some sort of temporary matting or something along those lines in place for the meantime, so that vehicles can get over it. If it's dry enough, we won't even need those, but just in case right. we get a monsoon in September, they will be available. Um, and so in order to apply for DOT to get their approval, we need approval letters from the select board, um, as well as approval letters from the chief of police and the chief of fire. But you guys. Um, yeah. And thank you for the email about just kind of where you've been, the meetings you've had, because mm -hmm. we haven't, haven't been able I to I think see it, it, all it needed something in writing. I've yeah. had meetings, but not necessarily uh, great updates for you in writing. So, yeah. again, I apologize for the light reading. Yeah, super <laughs> helpful to have, though, have it in one spot and be able to see all the things that you've been working on. Mm -hmm. um, and I was pleased to hear that there would be no parking, not pleased about the no parking, but just as far as the number of people and not yes. having to worry about like a bunch of people trying to get out of there and, and that you've secured your parking in um, Hadley and Amherst uh, f for the event and you've got everything else kind of laid down pretty good. I know that there's been a um, hes hesitancy to approve without that second egress. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are working towards that. We've had um, a survey done. We've got an engineer working on it. Yep. Um, unfortunately, that egress is right over a storm culvert, so we're yep. treading very carefully there. Sure. Yep. And I think, um, and then I think, uh, I guess I personally, I would be in favor of approving this for this specific event. Um, maybe the hesitancy is, oh, if we approve it for this, then, you know, any concert can be this. Well, we know that, and you know that, that this is really specifically for this event. Yes. And that um, we're still working towards the permanent second means of egress and uh, finalizing the, the, um, the plan. Yes. So I, I think, you know, based on knowing that all the work and practice you've had with the concerts, um, and how to manage manage the, the thing and all the planning work you've done, knowing that there'll be no parking there, it'll all be shuttled in, I'm okay, but I want to hear from the So, um, a couple of things I wanted to first say that I know that um, Chief Pachorek feels there's still some deficiencies in the EAP, and I believe that you may have had communication with Adam Sokolowski on these issues, I do Sergeant. think this one might address some of those concerns, mm -hmm. which I don't think Chief has had a chance to review since I did send it this morning. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So um, I'm going to ask Casey Warren for some advice before we make any motions on this. Is this something that we could approve contingent on final signing of EAP? Um, because I, I'm not an expert in emergency action plans, um, and I, I know there was some current concern in Chief Pachorek's not available online at the moment, so. So I do have one thing to throw out there. Um, to have the half marathon, regardless of the occupancy, 
we need this letter. Right. Oh, I, I, that's why. So I, even if we have a 1,500 person marathon, which right. we are still technically right. permitted to do, right. we would still need this letter, and this letter would specifically be for the half marathon, right. Um, right. and it does not necessarily tie into the occupancy. That being said, I am yeah. very eager at this point, 40 days out from a, a yeah. big event, to Absolutely. have that sign off on the AP. If there's you know additional concerns about that, I'm happy to address that at a yeah. So you're sort of, they're kind of separate, but together are. at the same time. You're I get currently it. permitted for 1,500. Correct. Yeah. And you're anticipating having, you know, um, 2,300 runners and 2,600 guests. Right. So that's what do you do if um, we give you this letter and, and the EAP only allows you to have 1,500 participants? Well, I, I mean, I, this is a question. Uh, <coughs> theoretically. 1,500 could drink, and then the rest has to hang out on the soccer field. Not an ideal solution, but I don't want to get to that point. I do think that there have been a lot of really huge strides that we have made towards this half marathon, and if you read the amount of meetings that I just realized I yeah. have attended since January, I know we've covered a lot of ground. Um, the, the EAP is about 78 pages, and I did just increase it with as much of an operational portion of the half marathon that I can provide before MEMA gets a hold of it. So mm -hmm. I've given you as much of that as I could without knowing the names of you know the officers that will be doing the details, without knowing the names of the EMS fire that will be there. Um, additionally, I've given the parking and shuttle options, basically everything also that the DOT is asking of us is right. in this, yeah. um, in addition to the doors having now gone in to right. our building, which was another delay in sort of getting this finalized, because right. before that, before we put in three sets of double doors, our occupancy was only a little over 4,000. Now we are a little over 5,000. Gotcha. Yeah. And we have um, taken steps with both police and fire to address how to best understand where people need to shelter in place and how to sort of capture who's in there um, by way of wristbands. So if you have a blue wristband on, for example, we know you're one of 700, you're going in the tap room. Yep. I, yeah, I, I'm not. But again, this, is, this is not for the EAP, um, right, but I do exactly. understand your hesitancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the thing is, is that are you still in negotiation with the chief and with the fire chief as far as getting the EAP done prior to this? We need, we need to finalize that, absolutely. So we need to, I don't know if it's best to have a, a meeting with them here or mm -hmm. in private, in one-on-one -on -one sessions where they can ask all of their questions. I do think we've met several times over the last eight months. Yeah. Um, again, some of that was waiting on those doors, which just went in a couple weeks ago. Um, so hopefully that's resolved some of the outstanding issues. The driveway is really the only one that I can't accomplish before September, but we have a temporary one. Yeah, and I don't feel like the driveway is part of this specific. I mean, I feel like I'm good with this specific event because it's not, we don't have any parking there. There's nobody on site. Last time we had the um, marathon there, everybody parked there and, and, and other places as well. But this time there'll be no parking on the property at all. It's all bus shuttle delivery and pickup. So and the, I think the egress part of that, while we're still working towards that for the EAP, um, I feel like if, if we approve this specifically for this one event, not for EAP for going forward, for any occupancy going forward, but for this specific event, it feels like they've done most. And then, um, you know, maybe there's a, a conversation with, with chief, the two chiefs, and like you said, to set up a meeting this mm -hmm. week or next, well, I don't know where it is, but next week um, to get that finalized done. But I think the, and you're caught in a catch-22 because you can't go forward with any of the stuff with DOT and MEMA until we have at least a letter of support for the event, correct? This specific event. We can't, yeah, we can't apply for DOT, which is a requirement to host the race without the letter. Right. Um, that being said, I mean, There's no we have there. had conversations with DOT. I met with them last Tuesday. They are willing to accept sort of all of the paperwork that I've presented you and then in the additional forms yeah. for DOT in advance. 
and the letters of support can come a little bit later. I don't want to yep. chance it too close. Right, right. Um, so if we do need to continue tonight to have this discussion again in the month of August, and please don't, you know, make yeah. me so not sleep DOT will in accept September. It. DOT they will, will begin review of the paperwork so that they don't have to review All the of bulk of it when the letters finally come in, basically. And it's um, really, if we give the letter of support here, we're waiting for chief, the two chiefs. Correct. And that's really all we need mm -hmm. left uh, to do that. <coughs> and it really settles around this one event, and they may be looking for the EAP for every event. I and that's, that's sure one of that the weird caveats that we're in, and I don't know, I know there's enough wiggle room in the language of the EAP for there to be caveats on the events, right? So all of our mm -hmm. concerts this past summer have only been 1,500 occupancy. Right. Um, and with that, in the EAP, if there's a clause that we need to throw in that says there will, if there is an event of 5,000, it requires sign off from the select board, the yeah. chief of police, chief right. of fire, or something like that. If that would make everybody for this year feel more comfortable, right. and maybe give me a couple less sleepless nights <laughs> so that I can plan this half marathon. Right. Is DOT gonna accept this without the EAP? The EAP yes. will be submitted. Uh, so basically this letter, but it hasn't this letter is about the road closures and the use, yeah. not Two about the EAP. Things. The EAP um, actually things. is related to our liquor license. Okay. Right. So you're, if I'm hearing you right, if we were to approve this on the 21st, you would be okay? I'd be okay. I'd be slightly panicking, but it would be doable. And if we approve this tonight, Casey, clarification-wise, so the board knows what we're doing, um, you still need... Two other letters. Two other letters. So... She still needs letters from Chief, Chief Swayze and Chief Pachero. And I think they're waiting for us to approve. Yeah. Um, I have a different understanding, but oh, okay. that's okay. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have a different understanding on that. So, um, you know, we haven't had a motion yet, so that's fine. No. Um, no. We're just discussion. Uh, my feeling is... You know, I could push this off to the 21st or knowing that the chief of police and the fire chief have to sign off and provide separate letters, I could easily do this tonight too. I, I, I think that the, the issues that need to be resolved um, can be resolved in the next couple of weeks, mm -hmm. but um, I think we need to work with Casey to schedule a meeting with both the chiefs and yourself and Maybe, maybe if you're around, Blake, you could be sitting in for the board. Correct. Um, just because you're familiar with these kinds of things. Um, and really push to get the EAP approved because mm -hmm. I, I know there's some training thoughts that there were concerns about and staffing stuff that there are some concerns yes. about. And, and I, um, we did discuss that at the last meeting um, because there was some confusion on the training. So that is something I did bring back to the leadership team at Treehouse. Um, and we have allowed for um, an additional half an hour in between the um, sort of closure of the regular operating hours and a concert um, to allow for a brief period of training and just, you know, with call outs and concerts being different days of the week, different people are sort of plugged in for any given concert. Um, so to allow for a period of training and retraining day of a concert. And we also have two sort of outside of concert days trainings for the month of August and an additional one for September now planned. Okay, so for purposes of discussion, I'll make a motion to uh, approve writing a letter of support for the 2024 Treehouse Brewing Company Half Marathon scheduled for sub Sunday, September 15th, 2024. Second. Okay, so what's your thoughts? Can we, can we speak, put, speak into the mic? Can we put the, um, just the, uh, that if it isn't approved by the chiefs, that this would become null and void. That's the only thing I'm concerned about, is that if they aren't gonna come forward and approve this. Then it's, I mean, ours is that, but then they can't move in forward I, at all. They wouldn't, the DOT wouldn't anyways. accept it yeah, either way. Um, anyways. But if, you, if you need to put a clause in there on the letter of support, I don't know if, if that changes your motion tonight. Um, if you need to put a clause it, in it there, really if, I'm okay with that. If they have to do letters, they do. then we're fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we can do what we're doing here. And right. then if they, do, I just if you don't want to give sure. it to me until we get those letters too, that's fine too. Right, yeah. Um, my feeling is that, um, you know, We've been talking for eight months and we should get this thing resolved and um, I see no objection to supporting this contingent on the fact that 
two other departments have to. have to sign off, and they're the more important ones. Public safety is their realm, and mm -hmm. right. Um, so that's my thought anyway. What do you it's think? Mine too. I agree. I agree with that. I think we can I improve this that. going forward. I think yep. I, I treat them a bit separately. The EAP still has to be approved, and I think you know we, they could always make a motion to exempt this one event as long as all those criteria are met for this one event yep. approve it uh contingent you know but it doesn't affect you know the eap is no good for any other event in the future until those specific items are addressed as long as they have everything they need for this event i think we could get something moving to get this thing done and then hash out the rest because uh, they're not holding any other events that size this year anyway no, no. so yeah all right so anything else blake no, nope, I'm good. All right, so um, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor of issuing a letter of support for this one event? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you all for your time. Thank you so much. And we need to schedule that meeting for next week, so yeah. please work with Casey and get it scheduled. Yeah. Thanks, Allison. Thank you. I'm going to hit the lights. Oh, yeah. All right, well, um, Trevor is going to go turn the lights on in case it gets dark in here. Um, Christopher's here. Yep. Christopher Dunn, are you ready? Ready when you are. Okay, so, yeah, give it to Trevor. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, uh, why don't you take it away, Chris? Sure. Um, so first item on my list here is the contract with Kuhn Riddle Architects for designer services for the 1888 building. Um, we selected them as a preferred designer back in, I believe it was May at this point. Um, and, you know, they've been working with, um, with Tim, myself, uh, members of the 1888 uh, Building Advisory Committee, ROPM P3. Um, to kind of shape how this uh, project will unfold. And we've gotten to a point where we feel comfortable with moving to the next step and signing a contract. Um, so this is uh, roughly 125,000 for phase one. So, you know, the work, some of the work that they've already completed, uh, plus additional work to bring the design of, um, you know, the 1888 building as municipal offices, uh, you know, further along. And then um, pending town meeting approval, um, an additional $500,000 um, to actually bring that design to final design and construction administration. Um, and that would all be funded via uh, ARPA, which I believe the select board already approved back. I believe, him, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was last year. 2023, um, 2023, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's uh, that's the contract you have before you, and, and happy to answer any questions before the, the board makes a motion on it. Yeah, just some additional information. Um, there is there is also some uh, CPC money that was approved for the design phase. There it was unexpended because um, we didn't move forward with uh, the the Boston-based architecture firm's plan was too expensive, and um, this one is. And scale back significantly to respect uh, and and to prevent us from getting into a situation where we need to borrow any money. Uh, so we have approximately eight point seven million dollars in federal, state, and local money that's already in the bank to do the project, and um, hopefully we can bring it in for less than that. Um, so uh, anyway, I just wanted to add that. Um, so. Do you have some questions, Blake? I know you yeah, you're new to just, this process. Uh, this is again is the design on the front end of uh, of the project itself. The, the money obviously has already been approved, and when the design comes in, um, I know Chris, you're going to be looking at it. Is that something that's going to be brought forward, and we're going to take a look at it and make sure that it's available to the public? Yeah, so I can kind of sketch out you know what the next steps are. So on. Uh, August 14th, so next Wednesday, um, Tim and I will be appearing before the CPC to make a you know the formal request. We've already submitted an application for the the additional CPC monies. Um, 
And then uh, we're aiming to hold a public meet, the first public meeting either late August, so late this month or early September, and then a second public meeting, um, you know, in late September, early October, just prior to the special town meeting. We'll of course we'll be asking voters to, um, you know, approve uh, that CPA funding um, and move forward into the next step with the, with the project. Um, so, and I will say also our. Advisory committee is meeting intermittently, so we uh, had a meeting a couple of Fridays ago. We've got another meeting coming up uh, later this week. Um, so they're also guiding the process and, and providing you know some community input there. So, Thank you. Yeah, the um, the advisory committee is made up of um, myself and Christopher uh, Vern Harrington of Thayer, formerly of Thayer Associates, a, a respected builder, and uh, Joseph Matty of. Uh, Shelburne Associates, an architect who's worked in the uh, Valley for 45 years, um, and uh, Julie Chalfont, who is sitting in for the Town Building Advisory Committee and Finance Committee. So um, they were very helpful in, throughout the process of interviewing and selecting a new architect, and um, we've gone through the introductory iterations of what the design should look like, and we've Welcome. I mean, people are all welcome to attend the CPC meeting, and um, we're encouraged. We, we'll notify people uh, when these these uh, public meetings are for input. The first one in particular will be showing uh, the conceptual design that we're looking at and looking for input from people to from the community. And the follow, you know, the following will be sort of more to review and discuss what what changes were made as a result of interaction with uh, residents and um, and then um, bring it to town meeting and, and hopefully uh, get approval for the project. As I say, it's the funding and the money is, is available to do the project without borrowing and, um, and with contingency money built into the, the plan. So, um, Can I make a motion? Yeah, would you? So uh, I move that... Um, that the contract between the Town of Deerfield and Kuhn Riddle Architects, Inc. in the amount of $124,700 for Phase 1 analysis and con conceptual design and $500,000 for Phase 2 final design and construction administration services for the renovations of the 1888 building to house the Town of Deerfield Municipal Offices with the uh, total amount of the con contract not to exceed $624,700 and further authorize the chair to sign on behalf of the select board. Second. Um, yeah, and so just further slight discussion before we, we go forward. Um, we worked hard with Kuhn Riddle to, uh, a lot of times architecture is based on percentages of cost of projects. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't agree with the, the part of DCAM. I don't know what's the, what's the end. Uh, what the DCAM is a, is a yeah this state organization that uh, sets guidelines for proper pricing on these things is it like more than fifteen percent and uh, you know DCAM would allow eleven percent because there's a historic uh, restoration component of this project but Kuhn Riddle agreed to reduce their fees by more than two hundred thousand dollars because they're interested in this project so um, you know I've been very conscious about. Um, squeezing where appropriate, and uh, the OPM also um, took twenty thousand dollars off of their fee for this first phase. So hopefully, um, we'll, we'll continue to man manage the project this way if it's approved by the voters. It was also, I think, you also had in the contract um, the five thousand five hundred thousand for phase two designs contingent on town meeting approval. It says in fall twenty twenty. Yes, exactly. Yeah. If it doesn't go forward, then Right. It stops at the 124.7. And, and we can sever the contract in seven days, hold harmless if it's not funded. So I read through all the contract and the town's very well protected. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Lisa Mead's uh, office and, and Casey Warren have developed good baseline contracts for, for the town. So we're pretty well protected in the language. So we appreciate yep. that. So is there any further discussion about this one? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Elchie, aye. 
And I'll make a motion to uh, move uh, to approve the contract between the Town of Deerfield and uh, Project Planning Professionals, Inc., P3, in the amount of 50000 for the owner's project manager services for the renovation of the 1888 building to house the Town of Deerfield Municipal Offices and further authorize the chair to sign on behalf of the select board. Second. Uh, so, discussion. So this is just the project management, right? That's Oversight? Yeah, right. It. Yeah, so th this is just to back up real quick because I think there were two kind of contracts floating around. So there, what you should have in front of you now is, is a contract amendment for $30,000 for phase one for OPM services by P3. So we had an existing contract with P3 based on this project starting in 2022. Uh, they completed you know, their work when we had the Boston architects uh, you know, in charge of the project. Since we went back and got a different architect, um, you know, they, they essentially redid that RFQ process to procure uh, designer services. And then they've also been helping us manage the project. Um, and so they're looking for 30,000 for this first phase and then their total fee all in if you know the, the uh, project was to be approved at town meeting would be 248,000. So we're um, the the motion do we need to redo that Casey um, just to yeah, correct the figure that amount wasn't correct. Yeah. So what's Yeah. So What's that? Yeah, do you want Oh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, well, the, there is a difference between this one and the architect's. Um, oh, that's because I didn't fix this motion. So yeah, yeah. The, it, there was one. Mo we had fixes at the end of the day. Um, I tried to fix all of the motions um, with the amounts, but. So this is for thirty thousand, correct? Or thirty thousand. Yeah. It should be thirty. Not fifty. That's what. Yeah. Yep, yeah, because that's what's in their contract. Yep, that's what's in the contract. The amendment for the contract. And the second, they will, if we don't approve this at town meeting, they won't be working for us anyway. <laughs> right. Okay. So uh, I move to approve the contract between the Town of Deerfield and Project Planning Professionals, Inc. in the amount of 30000 for owner project manager services for the renovation of the 1888 building to house the Town of Deerfield Municipal Offices and further authorize the chair to sign on behalf of the select board. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Sorry. Um, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. A little confusing. And I assume part of this is a meeting to kind of show, at, like, uh, public engagement, show the plans, that kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. The the um, the architect and P3 um, will be present at both of these public information meetings, and um, they will be presenting. You no. Know, their initial plan, concept designs, um, talking about how space is being allocated, um, and issues like having functional technology, technology installed in the meeting room so that people can hear each other, and they can there'll be multiple screens for people in the audience to be able to see what's being discussed, and uh, you know there'll be screen behind the the board members who are presenting information. So um, a lot of the issues that we struggle with in this building will be addressed. But uh, yeah, they're definitely um, going to want to take comments from residents. Did we vote on this? We just, uh, we seconded, we just need to vote. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. All right. Um, then architectural design for the 1888 building. Then you've got uh, Energy Solutions, right, for the Leary lot? Yes. Uh, so this has been this has been a long time coming. So this is the uh, distributor uh, for the EV charging stations that the town is purchasing as part of the Leary lot. So um, we've got. Uh, level two charging station that is replacing the current charge point level two station at that parking lot. Um, so this is an upgraded model and I, I believe off the top of my head um, that was roughly 40,000 uh, for the charge point charging stations. 
And then, um, you know, the more significant item is the level three charging stations being provided by Autel. Um, so again, these are level three charging stations. So that means, you know, they charge about 20, um, 20 miles a minute um, charge. So it's really pretty rapid and, you know, potentially you could have visitors to South Deerfield stopping in plugging their car in and then, you know, stopping by, you know, Leo's table or, or Johnny Figs or one of those places and then popping right back to their car to get back on the highway. Um, so there's some real economic development potential there and um, this is a really critical first step because as soon as we actually get those purchases made, um, we can start moving forward with um, Eversource commissioning a transformer that's needed to actually make them go live. Um, so this is something Obviously, we would love to have these up and running in fall of 2024. Um, you know, if it ends up that we have to wait until spring, that's okay. But of course, we'd love to, you know, get the, the parking lot done, which uh, if any of you have been over there, you can see it's making some significant progress. Um, and then be able to have people immediately parking and charging their cars. So, um, so again, Rexel uh, is the distributor for those charging stations and the contract total is around 418000 Okay. Yeah. And this is, this money is part of the 2.5 million federal grant uh, that covers the cost of these things. Is that correct? This is um, either the the EverSource funding, um, which we're still you know talk, in talks with EverSource, um, or part of that town match um, from uh, ARPA funds. Yeah. Okay. Do you have, do you have questions for him, Blake? No, I think that. Um, now, you said it's going to replace one of the, the charges that's already there. Is there a credit for that? I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how this works, so. You know, it's a good question. Um, I, I think Chris Nolan was managing this procurement, so I would have to ask him, you know, how that worked exactly. Um, but I, 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 can, like, I can give you some additional details on, you know, what happened with the level two. Um, yeah, I think because yeah, that question did come up. Oh, we've already got level two. Why don't we just leave it there? And I think that unfortunately that wasn't an option. Right. Um, but, I yeah. mean, it still uh, works. It still works, but it's not an updated version or what? I, I, I again, yeah, how long has I, it been? I think all the wiring and stuff is not going to be the same. I think they're moving the whole the whole wiring structure the, to oh, the other oh, side oh, oh, because of the voltage going I, through I, at that point. But is it? It's a, there's a lot of technical issues, but um, Chris, are you saying that the, the current level, just, I don't know if it's a level two or not, the one that's next to um, the Cheslix parking lot is going to be removed? Uh, or is that staying in place? I think it's, I thought it was staying in place. Uh, I, I can double check. I, I thought it was going to end up actually being gone. removed at this point. Okay. Um, I, I was under the it would make sense if it is. It would consolidate things. It would make yeah. more sense. Um, so can you check on that detail? But we still need to buy the uh, yes the the infra the hardware. And then yeah. if, if possible, I guess if possible, find out if we can just hold that unit. And you know, I'm sure there'll be another spot to put a charger. But um, yeah, I'm not yeah. Sure, I'm not sure what the those. agreements with EverSource EverSource helped pay to install those things, or I believe. Right. They correct? did, and then Greenfield Savings helped with some some money towards it right. too. Paving bank. And the first so one. The first one. The first one we had. It was a combination of EverSource giving us money for the infrastructure and the Green Communities Grant. Right. Paying for the actual installation of the unit, mm -hmm. and then Greenfield Savings Bank provided um, funds for well, some so. of the annual annual um, fees. That's annual right. Annual fees. Okay, well, if you could get an answer for us on what's actually happening with that unit. Our, well, the other question that I have, because again, I'm, I, I, I'm unfamiliar with this. Sure. Is, as far as when people use it, the funding that they pay, does it go to Eversource? Does it go to the town? Who's it go to? Comes to the town. Town. Yeah, we, we, have a charge we, we, set the, we set the We set the actual kilowatt hour rate um, for, like, if it's 30 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, and that money goes to pay for operating and electricity, uh, electricity and uh, fees fees for charge point. Yeah. Um, okay. So, and we can change the fee if we find out that it's, you know, um, not covering the cost. We can raise it. But thirty cents, twenty five to forty two cents per kilowatt hour is pretty standard. And um, you know, in in my experience with 
EVs over the last five years. Um, so we have currently set the number at 30 cents, I believe. I think that, and, that level three is going to be a huge draw to the town. Yeah, I mean, having four of those is going to make a big difference. I, I'm optimistic that Gary Bogoff at uh, BBC is going to get some business from this. <laughs> you know, 30 minutes per charge, it's just long enough to have one, one beverage time. and be okay <laughs> when you go back on the road. Um, but anyway. Or restaurants. Anything. Or restaurants, exactly. Yeah, plus Cheslicks. Ah, and Cheslicks, Cheslicks. Yeah, yeah, sell a lot of sandwiches. Yep. I know that when I, yep. when I travel, um, when my wife and I travel, we, we are happy when we see that there's a charger near a restaurant because, you know, every three or four hours you want to get something to drink or have a coffee or whatever. So, um, so it's been I'll, I'll make a motion. Do I make a motion? Please. So i move to approve the contract between the town of Deerfield and Rexel Energy Solutions in the amount of $417,667 for the purchase of two, two dual port level two charging stations and two level three DCFC charging stations for installation at the Leary Municipal Parking Lot, subject to review and approval of town council. She hasn't been second. second. Uh, what's that? She hasn't. There's one detail we're waiting okay. to hear back. And then are we uh, approving a um, uh, motion for the chair to sign? No, actually, this no, is the. All you guys are signing this. Oh, also. Sign. Everybody's okay. signing. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Point of question, no point of order there, Casey. Mm -hmm. So we have to sign our name and print our name. Is is that because our signatures are so poor that? No, it's normally because other people's signatures are. <laughs> like you can't tell my name is my name if you look at my signature. Mm -hmm. It's actually fairly standard on most contracts. No, I am trying to be slightly humorous. <laughs> All right. Um, how are we doing? You good? You guys are moving along. Yep. All right, Christopher, do you have other things? Um, I see they're uh, going I just down. wanted to, you know, provide a quick update on the Leary Lot construction. So I don't know if everyone's got a chance to stop by there. Um, at this point, they've kind of completed all the vegetation removal. Um, they have actually the sidewalk along the driveway on Elm Street is completed. Um, and everything's kind of staked out so you can if you take the site plan you can see you know Oh, that's where the chargers are going to go. That's where the transformers are going to go. That's where the rain garden will be um, So it's really it's coming along um, And in the next few weeks, we're expecting things to really move forward. It's going to be pretty exciting So it's, it's great to see it actually coming together um, But I did want to see if the board members had any questions or on that project or, or any others that are going on at the moment Yes, and can, um, can you uh, talk a little bit about um, the the notion when we had that meeting, site meeting the other day, there was talk about um, seeing if we could work some scoping of the, the sewer trains in that area into a project that Trevor's working on? Yes. Oh, yeah, sure. So. Um you know, one thing that, so Taylor Davis, the, the, the general contractor on it, was looking at the relocation of a tree box filter at the entrance of the driveway. Um, just based on how the drainage is working out, they were working with Berkshire Design, the, the designer, to figure out what the best option there was to mitigate, you know, excessive storm water. Um, so I know one question that came up from Berkshire Design was just whether or not we had good intel on what's actually under the street there in terms of uh, drainage. Um, and so I know, you know, I've been talking to Trevor about DPC and their grant to do some cameraing of basically our, our drainage system here in town. Um, so potentially there's an opportunity for them to take that chunk out and prioritize it was my understanding from the conversation with Trevor, um, which would be helpful. 
they're, they're going to try and address this tree box filter drainage issue kind of towards the end of construction, so probably you know September time frame. Um, so there might be an opportunity for those two projects to have some synergies. Mm. I did, uh, just to follow up, I did speak with, after talking with uh, Chris, um, I talked to uh, DPC and um, the grant that we got to do the um, camera work for all the drainage of our sewer and the drainage of our waste waste uh, water, uh, not waste water, uh, storm water, um, it is somewhat flexible. So we, we have that ability to one, look at that work and, and he, um, Dave said that he would get in touch and, and Chris would get in touch and try and figure out how to prioritize certain areas in town with the work that's going on to move that forward to be helpful on that project. And then I also discussed with him the ability to camera all the stormwater and sewer on Sugarloaf and Park. So, uh, and he said that absolutely they can do that. So we'll have a good idea of what condition the infrastructure under Sugarloaf is in case we do decide to want to take that over. Um, at some point, that was really the thing that was holding us up. So good news on that front too. Okay. So you, you all set, Christopher? Yeah, unless uh, does the board have any questions about other projects going on, or are we all set? All set, I think. Like you agree? Right, great. Too. All set. Yep. All right, can Thank I, you. Can I um, rearrange the order on some? Sure. So instead of jumping over to this sewer thing, can we ask Mr. Bukalon to come up? Oh, yes. yes Sunny okay. days. Sure. Ken, you want to come up Ken. and uh, talk about the Sunny Days HCA? Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm the co-owner and CEO of Sunny Days, so I can speak uh, hey, Brian. on the app again, if that's okay. Sure. sure. Welcome. Great, great. Good evening, everyone. So I just wanted to provide some background here and clarification around the HCA agreement uh, and how this ended up on the planning board meeting agenda this evening. Uh, on Monday, July 15th, the Cannabis Control Commission notified both Sunny Days and the town clerk of Deerfield via the same email uh, that our existing HCA executed in 2021 was non-compliant with current commission regulations contained in Article 935 CMR 500-800 and 501-800. Uh, in addition to the non-compliant notification, the CCC also provided three options to bring the HCA into compliance. Uh, option one was the parties may su submit a compliant HCA. Option two was the parties may submit an HCA waiver. And option three was the parties may proceed under the model host community agreement. Um, on July 16th, I reached out to various select board members uh, in addition to the town general counsel, Elizabeth Linden, via email. The three options provided uh, for remedy were included in that email. Uh, in addition to that, the CCC did let us know that they gave us a 30-day notice to resubmit a compliant HCA. Um, so in, in an effort to finalize ahead of that submittal date, which would be August 15th now, our suggestion to the committee to feasibly resolve the compliance issue within that allotted 30-day period was to go with option three, the model host community agreement, uh, at least as the basis for discussions. Uh, that CCC provided model template was included in the aforementioned email um, to the select board members and the town general council. So I believe at that point um, it was Tim Hilchey's suggestion that he move the motion to the planning board meeting tonight to discuss it further. <clears throat> so my understanding is that uh, since the um, the CCC started issuing new regulations. Um, their, ret their retroactivity has been challenged in court. Exactly. And um, we have an HCA that's in compliance with the previous law. And um, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Casey, I would like to see our council, the lead council, rule on whether we need to actually just provide a letter saying that we're in compliance uh, that the, the HCA is in existence, uh, that no business is being taken, taken place, there have been no costs, and uh, that would be my preferred approach uh, because, uh, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but based on the concrete nature of the ruling against um, 
the people that were the uh, plaintiffs in the case. Uh, it's clear that a lot of the things that the CCC is trying to do um, violate existing case law about you know retroactivity. So, um, can you talk a little bit about that, Casey, and how we address that in the timeline that uh, will help Sunny Days meet the August 15 deadline? So there. And I don't want to go into too much detail about the court cases that are happening, but essentially um, the question is whether there's a re retroactive look back, and that's come into a courtroom and decisions have been made about it. Uh, there's a case in Essex County right now. Um, but for purposes of, of the questions in front of the board is right now, the operation it has not commenced. Correct. So the HCA exists so you can keep, continue to obtain your annual preliminary licenses. You don't have a final license. And That's correct. the way I understand it, you can continue to go mm -hmm. back to the CCC and ha with even without a change to this HCA because you don't, you, your operation has not commenced and this is, Third hand, it's it's a couple of a lot of us talking this through. Um, I think what I'm hearing is it would be useful for the board to have some clarity about that, about whether we should renegotiate in light of a the court cases, but b the bigger issue of there's nothing to be paid to the town until you commence operations. The HCA really exists to fundamentally create the connect between the, re the operation that your company will complete and what might be due to the town in terms of community impact funds. So right now there's nothing out there. So That's the if fundamental I, piece if, of if information, manner, there's nothing out there. On I'm, so, I'm sorry, I just want to interject on one point of clarification there. So this came up through our renewal process with the CCC for a provisional license. So they won't actually approve our provisional license. They won't renew it until we submit a compliant HCA. So they're not making a distinguishment between operating and not operating. Yeah, I hear that. This, the binding document, you know, whether we're in provisional did, status or in operational status. Did they list, um, just because I have a million other things going on too, uh, fully fully in favor of this operation and we'll do what we need to to get it through. What, did they list the items that were in non-compliance? Yes, they listed. Um, they didn't specify them. I think the suggestion was to reference uh, Article 935 CMR 500, um, yeah. which I believe is included in the agenda today. Yep. Uh, but that, that's all the clarification they gave us. They just said, generally speaking, this document, you know, there's certain areas of it that are um, non-compliant with current commission regulations. And the document that the CCC provided to us was the same document provided to the town clerk uh, in the email that I mentioned earlier. Yep. And that's, we have, we're looking at the same information that you are. Yeah. Regardless. Excuse me, can you give me that CMR again? Sure, it's um, 935 CMR 500-180 and 501-180. So here's one, my thought on this, and, and uh, um, I think we need to have a meeting where Lisa attends and gives us advice about this, because the CCC would like nothing better than the town to sign a blanket agreement that takes away all the town's rights. Um, and I'm not sure that's the course we should take. We invested a lot of money in three HCAs, one of which is going to bear fruit, sunny days. Um, and we're not gonna get any of that money back from the state. Um, and we ha we're gonna incur more legal expenses if we have to, you know, make some of these decisions without having legal counsel give us advice. Um, so I wish we had done this sooner, um, but I would like 
Um, Can we put it on the 21st and get these answers in? Well, the see, the, the, the problem is they, they the say they need this letter by the 15th. Well, that just why is better. Why is the CCC forcing a 30-day period to make us conform with a new law that has retroactivity issues? Uh, yeah. This is going to be litigated for three or five years. Um, and it's going to turn out that the CCC didn't have the authority to do what they did. And a lot of the things that they did are probably good ideas because I understand that the HCAs vary from community to community and it's not fair to the cannabis producers and it's not fair uh, for various other reasons. Yeah. Some, some uh, you know, I'm not even going to speculate about all the things that might have gone on behind closed doors. It didn't happen here. Right. And um, we have an existing document that we negotiated in good faith. So is there any way that we can um, get Lisa Mead from MTC, our legal counsel, to help us with this in a timely fashion? Or can we send a letter to the CCC saying we need more time to... So that would be a good question for the experts in our law firm that handle this right. particular thing so and let's just Ken's met, tomorrow. we had this meeting a few years ago yeah. what we did tim was we sat down i sat down with our counsel ken sat down with his counsel and we hashed yeah, it out yeah. in, in two meetings we weren't up against this kind of a deadline but i i think it would be useful if we could hash that out and then bring something basically back to the board that w is acceptable to the yeah. CCC because We're with you, so. we need to know you know w I do need to speak to counsel about that yeah. yep. because she may have run into this situation with I'm other sure she groups has. Yeah. so, so Casey, before we try to schedule Lisa to come to a meeting just let's do some back yeah. yeah well right no what I was saying is let's reach out to Lisa right you do what you need to do with her Tell her that there's this August 15th deadline that's being arbitrarily imposed on sunny days. Mm -hmm. And what is the net effect of it? Um, I don't know. You're not in operation. It's not like they're going to stop you from doing anything. You're going to build your building, and we're going to get an HCA in place well before the time you start operating. So um, yeah. and let's we look for... Next week we can meet. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe we tentatively set... And then if we have to have a meeting. Yeah, yeah. just set the know. date for Wednesday, and that's it's before August 15th, right? Yeah, it is. It would be the 14th. Yep. Um, or if we need to do it... Yeah, the 15th is probably the... The 14th is probably the day I could yeah. do. Um, let's make it so happen. you want to do a... Set a tentative meeting for the 14th? Well, if we you, should get it posted just in yeah, case. Yeah, because yeah. that would be the only topic... I guarantee. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so you wouldn't have to sit and wait. Um, I know it's, uh, I, you might think I'm being arbitrary about this, but it's just, you know, we, we have what was considered a legal document binding for five years, uh, and, uh, and now we're being told to let somebody else make legal decisions for the town, and I'm not prepared to do that. They've just so do you want so, so the, I just have one comment. Yeah. Sure. So, the, the CCC originally sent both of us, um, we, we sent our application and renewal. The CCC sent us the town and Brian and I yep. um, each the same letter. Said you're both not in compliance, you need to send us um, a compliant um, HCA. Right. The town lawyer got back to us and gave us a HCA from another town, another cannabis company we have it Brian and I have it she's wanted us to go through it um, we immediately compared it um, to the template that the CCC gives you which yeah. protects both the town and the you know the, the operator yeah. right right in that like the fourth definition there's like seven or eight really critical definitions it was just left out so it changes the spirit of the actual uh -huh template that the CCC wants people to use and will approve at this point in time now. Yeah. So that's why we're concerned with a little bit of mixed message coming from yeah. the town. One is an HCA from another town with another opera. I mean, it's just copy paste. Um, right. It's, was it an example? It, we can't review? start with that. We, we right. need, Brian and I need to start with oh, a template. If it was an example, it was probably an example. To review? No, it was, Brian? It was, it was, was it an example for you to review, or yeah, was it, it was an a, actual HCA that we wanted you guys to sign? That doesn't no. make sense. It, it, was, it was an HCA 
that was previously negotiated with another town that was suggested to be used as the as the basis of, of as a template. Study. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it wasn't like she was saying, "Let's change the name to Deerfield and and sign this." No. Yeah. No. So we 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 just simply want to use that template to start the negotiation, or however we do it. Right. And it, so you're not gonna if if you're saying you want to start that as a template and negotiate, you're not gonna get August fifteenth. You're not going to meet that deadline anyway. No, no. So, so it would be useful. Look, if we can manage to change what's in the current HCA to meet the deficiencies that are in there, that's a faster way to get it done, Ken. Yeah. And so template, template notwithstanding, Brian, it's yeah. faster if we use a document we have that we can make adjustments to. To your point about one element that's there, that's a comment that can come back and, you know, Right then, that can be added. Um, it's just, it's simpler not to recreate the wheel. Let's put it that so, way. I think that's why so she you, sent you that example. So you um, reach out, do some work, and when we we'll get back, yeah, I got a meeting I set for next myself weekend. two notes. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we can obviously, Brian and I, we've been we've been working with the CCC on multiple projects for other people and on ours too for right. years now. Right. Um, we'll be able to continue um, right. as we are Good. Um, because we just keep sending them the correspondence with the town and say, listen, right. we're corresponding with the town, but we can't get an agreement. So they let us keep going. Good. But we all know that us sitting here, we got to hash this out and just figure right. it out. I don't think, I, I, I don't think Tim, I, I understand what you're saying, but I don't think it's going to fly. I don't think yeah. we can just keep the old HCA, which is different from the new laws that they made I don't I don't we you can try and it's fine you, you can write a letter and go about that path <laughs> yep but I just don't think you in the long run that will make it substantially the the issue was wrong with it what what was the, the major deficiencies I don't have them in front of me I just wondered what the issue was like what did they I mean other than the, 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 the exact so. specified deficiencies are not listed in here oh, um got it. so yeah, this is, um, and it's addressed to the town of Deerfield and yep. Chief Executive Officer of Sunny Days. It just says there are deficiencies. It right, doesn't, it doesn't actually specify what okay. they are. All right. right. So we, all sort of, we, we all sort of know that it has to revolve around community impact fees and right. claimed community impact right. fees. Correct. So it's CIFs and CCIFs. Gotcha. That's basically what every company in this state that's renegotiating or trying to get right. their ACA, that's what they're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll hammer it out. <coughs> okay, cool. Figure it out. Um, I'm glad yes. to see a foundation was in. Yeah, we're getting there. We got one foundation in. Looks great. Yeah. It looks real great. You've when done a the great job there. Keep contractor will be back in like three weeks to pour the other one. So it's just, everyone's very busy right now. Well, you've done a great job of, of managing that site and keeping it just like you said it was. I'm going to keep the trees I can. I'm going to, you know, it, it's really looking good. And I, I can't thank yeah, you enough. And, uh, thank you. Working well with the concert, playing nice with the Conservation Commission. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean Pete's a great guy. Pete Law is a, a really knowledgeable man about these issues, so um, we're lucky to have him serve in Deerfield. Um, and exactly. I will, uh, you know, we we're uh, just, you know, hiring a new assistant town administrator, and uh, Casey's been swamped with uh, picking up two jobs. But um, we will definitely work to get this clarified as quickly as possible. Great, and um, Keep you, you know try to make headway next week and let's make it a point to communicate weekly and let people know you know here's where we are yeah um, and if you don't hear from us by Thursday then send us an email on Friday say what's yeah, yeah. going on sounds good uh, yeah please all right touch. yeah Th thank you everyone we'll keep right. working towards a you know conclusion on this yeah it's gonna look yeah, great. And if it, we'll, if it we'll is get there, there. one oh, yeah. question for you is anybody from the original CCC still working I don't think so. I don't think so either. <laughs> that whole board's been replaced. Yeah. Along it's, with a lot of the investigators. Yeah. yeah. There was a palace coup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's been a, quite a change in the employees over the, um, you know, multiple years that they've been operating. Now. Yep. Yep. Good to see you, Ken. All yep. right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All Thanks, right. Brian. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Brian. Um, can we let Valerie you? go, too, so she can? Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Because Trevor has to stay anyway. Right. <laughs> so do you have anything for Val, or she wants to yep. touch base? Valerie wanted to talk about. Yes. Valerie, are you, you there? Yes, I'm hey. here. It's good to see you. 
Good to see you guys too. I wanted to talk about the CPR uh, training for the high school students in at Frontier. And I know, is it the principal that is, or no, the superintendent is still on vacation? Yes. I think yeah. he's okay. back on the 9th. Okay, so I'm hoping that one of you guys can reach out to him when he comes sure. back. I don't know him personally. Yep. And propose this idea. I believe in the past, maybe they did do it. Uh, a lot of schools did. Massachusetts is one of the states that does not require it. Some states do require it mm -hmm. in their high schools. So we want to we want to be you know ahead. Okay. So yeah, uh, um, just so that people in the audience understand, uh, Valerie uh, is proposing that um, the South County EMS uh, work with the school to create a CPR class. Um, there are some questions around whether it would be a certification class and which would cost money or a general information training. Um, and um, Blake and I were at the South County EMS last week when, uh, before, when Valerie had presented this idea. And we raised it with uh, Chief Joshua Sparks. He's all in favor of doing it. Um, so I sent, that night I sent an email to Darius Mattistow and uh, um, Valerie and, and Joshua and Casey saying, hey, we want to explore this. That's when we found out that uh, Darius is on vacation because we got an email back. But um, we definitely want to move forward with this. So, so thank you for coming up with the idea, Valerie. Okay. It's, it's a okay. fabulous public had, service. Okay, I had one more thing not on that subject. Is that Richard and I spoke with Casey the other day and we would like to stay on um, in, in our roles. Indefinitely or just stay on? Um, I'll stay on indefinitely. Richard will stay on at least till the end of the year. Okay. Well, we'll consult with Casey about whether we have to do an official reappointment, but uh, we really appreciate okay. your consideration. I know it's yes. hard. Yeah, thank you. Val. It's hard to find people with your skills and, and professional background. Um, and also, a lot of the more more difficult situations have resolved themselves. Oh, good. Well, that's always good to know. <laughs> right. All right. Well, thank you again for uh, considering Deerfield and holding us in, uh, you know, good regard. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thanks, Thank Valerie. You. Good Great night. talking Thanks. to you. Have a good night. You too. Well, that's good news. Yeah, she, I was so happy to talk to her the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so Trevor, over to you. Oh. South Dalf Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility Aeration Upgrades. Yeah, let me, uh, let me, <laughs> in this book, let me find it. Bear with me a sec. No, I'll get it. I'll get it. There's just so much going on right now. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about a grant we received and work we did at the South, uh, the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant. And this is part of the, um, the grant. We, we had to have it on the agenda and talk to the public about, you know, what we did. So, and we do have it up on our website as well. And I think we got another email back uh, from DEP today. I don't know if we all responded yet, but there was a couple of things he wanted added, like his, the logo of DEP save something needed to get up on the website, that kind of thing. So just to, just to update everybody, the town of Deerfield completed aeration system improvements to the South Deerfield wastewater treatment facility. These improvements will make the uh, treatment process more efficient, a 30% savings in the amount of electricity used for the aeration system um, process is anticipated. So in January 2023, it was announced that the Baker Polito administration through the Mass DEP's clean energy results program uh, with support from the Department of Energy Resources and Massachusetts Clean Energy Center awarded 8.1 million in state gr uh, gap three grants uh, to water and wastewater facilities for energy efficiencies and renewable power uh, generation in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The town of Deerfield was awarded $179,173 in a state gap uh, three grant which was combined with the funding from the town of Deerfield to complete the project as part of the recently completed phase one South Deerfield wastewater treatment facility uh, upgrades project. Uh, the state gaps 
uh, funding three grant program allowed the town to implement energy efficiency upgrades to its aeration system, which is the largest energy consumption source at the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility. The aeration upgrades included the replacement of the facility's uh, existing aging um, influent floating mecha uh, mechanical surface aerators. Those were the big kind of look like a fan that stirred everything up on top. Make a nice froth for you. Um, uh, with new, uh, we replaced those two old ones with new um, lower horsepower energy efficient floating mechanical surface aerators. Um, and the two, uh, two new floating mixers were also installed to allow the energy efficient operation um, through us of, of periods of um, turning the aerator off. Um, so uh, kind of just to backtrack, what happens is before they would just kind of run constantly for a long time. Now we, we have multiple of them and they run um, at, at different cycles. So they're off for a while, then they come back on, off for a while, come back on and they're a lot, you know, a lot less horsepower. So with the replacement of the 75 horsepower um, aerators with energy efficient 40 horsepower aerators and uh, the 20 horsepower mixers, the town is projected to save uh, $23,723 uh, annually through reduction of approximately $138,846 kilowatt hours uh, a year. So the, this energy conservation measure is estimated to re reduce the aeration process electricity used by around 30% per year. Uh, the total project cost was $595,000 $829.71, um, less the gap, we got the, the, the award, the grant was $179,173. Um, the town of Deerfield's cost was $416,654.71. Um, projected annual cost savings is $23,727, and we, I already talked about how much energy savings that would be. Um, so the, this was gonna be part of our project anyways, of, of you know, making the plant more efficient through the Headworks program to pull out all the rags. I don't know if anyone remembers, but at once a month or even more than that, we had to bring in a crane, uh, crane off the aerators, take off bags and bags and bags of rags, um, and all the things that got messed up and wrapped up around the, the burning out the motors on the aerator. Um, now that we have a Headworks program, we have not derag once um, so all of that um, you know instead of that that motor trying to churn through all that wrapped up rags and trying to stir up the water um, we have much more efficient multiple units that we can run off and on they don't get wrapped up in the rags you, there's hardly any foam on the top it just it's a really nice system so we were doing this work anyways um, so in conjunction with, you know, DPC noticed that they had these grants come out, so we applied for them. Um, the work is done. The last thing we had to do was upload this information um, on our website, have a, have a meeting at our select board meeting to talk about it, and then um, fill out the final information, and then we'll get that money back uh, to help pay off the, the work of the plant. So if anybody has any questions I'm always happy to answer that stuff and we are working with um, USDA and and a couple others to put together um, a fall kind of open house so everybody can walk around and see what we do down there and um, uh, USDA is excited to help with that with that project so uh, I'm waiting to hear a call back from Lyndon I think I've got his card here to, to work on that to get that going but any question, just reach out. Or if anyone has questions now, happy to So just to reconfirm my understanding of it is, and since I'm involved in it, uh, if, if I'm slightly confused, others might be. Um, <laughs> we were going to spend $595,829.71 on doing this. Yes. And so essentially this grant replaced some of that money, so we got this money back, yes. reducing the cost of this portion of the project. That's right. Okay. Exactly right. Yep. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure that I understood that. <laughs> All right. Um, so, what do we have to do? Something else to? No. Nope. Nope. Oh, uh, we just had to do this. I think there was an email back from uh, DEP today yes. that we just had to. You we probably have to saw. Just add a logo. Just add a logo. We have to request actually do an invoice for reimbursement. Yep. And once that's done, the money will get into our coffers. Excellent. So, yep. You just um, 
earned $179,000 for the town. That's right. Less than 20 minutes. Right. And there you go. Good with job. All that extra work Casey, well, five about. minutes when we get that. That's right. All right. Well, excellent. Like that works. <laughs> but everybody else worked really hard for a year. For no, year yeah. No, I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Yeah. Um, Sounds good. All right. Um, so now let's talk about uh, horse removal. Now, had you read those letters or do you want to delay this one meeting? Yeah. I'm happy to do that if, if that's... Let's, uh, let's delay it. Okay, so um, you can take that for light reading when, you, when you're heading to the Cape. Thank um, you. All right, so... You want to do it out first? Yeah, well, we're, we're going to hold off on the... Kelleher Drive till the next meeting, Casey. Is that all right? Do you want to hold off on that? Yeah, okay. uh, just to give Blake has had a lot on his mind, and yeah, so there's a yeah. lot going on for sure. All right. Okay. So I let's really do Jewett Ave. Yep. All right. Where are we on that? Oh, good grief! So. Hold on, I'm trying to write myself a note. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, Jewett Ave. So you have in front of you. Some information mm -hmm. about, it's essentially the backbone of a request for proposal. There's two key things I need the board to think about. One is value of the property, because that has to be identified. And whether you want to structure the RFP to be an RFP that's price only or an RFP that's price, that's where a consideration is made on the basis of price plus evaluative criteria. So to get the most advantageous offer based on those two elements. Mm -hmm. um, the, one of the things I wanted everybody to see was the outline. This is not a short process. It never is when you dispose of land. Yeah. Um, the the second page after the notice is the advertising and critical dates. Yeah. And they basically are based off of two things when you can advertise in the central register register and mm -hmm. what your deadline is after that date so it has to be 30 days after and not less than 30 days after your um, notice in the central register mm -hmm. and that's statute statute so essentially this is actually pushed an extra week so everybody needs to understand in order to get something on the central register you have to publish the week before. You basically submit it the week before and it runs the next week. I answered my own question here reading this. So, so the town already approved disposal. This yeah, is this just is for everybody set. to understand. It's this the, is the disposal is approved. Do it have property? Process. Yep. So the, some of the issues around that site were brought to my attention by the adjacent property own, owner, which is Oracle. Mm -hmm. They've been interested in acquiring that barn like they acquired the Alice property right, right. to rehabilitate it. Mm -hmm. um, initially, I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, you had down. that conversation, I think, about taking the barn down right. um, and potentially building the town something that we can use. The issue is, is we can't sell land and, and necessarily do that because we have all these requirements we have to right. follow. So we the, do need the storage space. We do need the storage space. So my thought was, if we did evaluative criteria plus price, mm -hmm. then perhaps the price you ask for is lower, but maybe that is something that a proposer would consider if the evaluative criteria offered some element of storage replacement. Storage replacement. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, I think, the intent all along is that we really needed space. I mean, yes, it's a dilapidated barn, um, but it, and it was a lot closer to our town building when we right. had, when, you know, the building was on that side of the property. But right. now, uh, you know, we do keep a lot of larger stuff that we can't fit in our other building. Um, Some of that stuff would end up outside yeah. if we just so sell the building. What you're Which saying is, is that they would build us something somewhere else. That was the intent. That was, was the, the first discussion. discussion. And there, there was space behind the garage that they, yeah. that Kevin okay. had identified. Yeah, between, um, the, between uh, the pilot and the garage, right? I think that's I where they were exactly talking about what he over said. there. Yeah. But fundamentally, so the two things I need you guys to think about is, what do you want to set the price at? 
And if you want to hold off on that question, to, I do just for a minute to deal with the evaluative criteria. Yeah. If we did end up having a meeting next week, this could be the second item on that meeting. <laughs> because yeah. the evaluative criteria are the things that are, you know, when you do a sale, there's various ways you can make something, you can look for advantageous um, elements of a sale right. or even a lease. They, yeah. There's an outline in the 30B manual about it. But the upshot is, is you try to get the best advantage by crafting those evaluative criteria to meet the town's needs. And so there could be an element of that. I just don't know what it looks like. Um, I do know that there was a conversation had that I wasn't privy to um, about how to structure that. Now, since there are concerns about the, how the building exists now, there's critters in the building, our stuff is in the building, and if we tore it all down, in a magical world where it didn't cost the town any money and it was torn down, it could all be pretty if somebody waved a magic wand. Um, I think that's really what Oraful would like to see is the building gone and a pretty space that benefits the area created. But once they realize that the process is fairly strict, I don't know that they were interested in paying a lot of money because they know it's going to cost them a lot of money to beautify that space. Yep. So, and we would sell the building as is. If you read through this, it, it, there's some elements to that. What's in here, and I basically cribbed this from a friend of mine who did one of these for us many years ago. Okay. Um, all the required documents are in there. It outlines yeah. in the instructions that they have to provide a bid deposit. Um, and then, you know, the places that you see highlights are places for me to look at, but also, um, like I say, in the rule for award. We can't put this out without a rule for award. Mm -hmm. You know, sale of property, um, offering highest price, or sale of property to the most advan advantageous proposer, yep. taking into consideration all evaluative criteria and price. So. Yeah. Okay, if I'm going to read this a bit more. So you yeah. want to read it? Yep. I gave it a. Yes, same here. Yeah, what absolutely. I'd like to be able to do is fill in a lot of the other blanks, so that if okay. you guys want to think about it, and if we yeah. do end up having a meet, if there is a meeting, the board has a meeting next week, that should probably be an item for discussion, even if it's a quick one. Yeah. I don't think you guys want to have more than an hour meeting if you're going to do no. an off week meeting. Oh no, yeah. absolutely not. Um, well, is there is there a suggested? evaluative criteria in here? So that was the one. Th I actually wanted to have the conversation with um, our council on this. Um, I had gotten the purchase and sale agreement for this particular sale because that also has to be included. And I wanted to, and I wasn't able to do that yesterday or today mm -hmm. um, to see if the if there were suggestions about evaluative criteria I mean I can pull them together it's just really the framework of what would be helpful for the town if we needed additional storage to house the the equipment that's already in that building mm -hmm. um, this is a totally just an idea that popped into my head I is that we might want to explore with Oracle I I didn't actually have discussions with them about when I inherited the the discussions over there. Um, there were there had been previous discussion about mm -hmm. building a shed and Correct. so on. So um, you know, to the extent that I was involved in this, you know, I was contacted as was Casey by the council for the company, and they expressed an interest in buying this. And several things were laid out, but I wonder if they would. Um, consider some sort of like 99 year lease and um, in exchange for building a storage unit at a place designated nearby, uh, if that's an optional way, rather than actually outright selling the land, um, maybe that's a way that we can work through this so that they can get what they want sooner. Uh, I don't know if it's legal. I don't know if it's a good idea. We still, if the value of the property is higher, is above a certain threshold, it would still require an RFP. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, that's... So we would the, still have to do that. Right, but, but we might not 
have to go through legal process of selling the land. We just have a lease agreement for an extended period of time. And if Oracle is still operating there 100 years from now, you know, and they, or they sell the property and the, the lease agreement lapses or, you know, I'm just throwing out there an alternate means of having them accomplish their goal um, that would allow them to save short-term money. Um, but um, I will read through this document as, yes, as we all will. Yep. Yep. Um, and, you know, then we can certainly, if, if we have that meeting next week, which we may. Hmm. Thinking. I'm thinking. Yeah. So. Um, okay. I'm thinking. So good. Um, we'll take this up at the next available opportunity. Okay. Whether that's next week or the following week. Yeah. I mean, it just pushes sort of the, the time. What you have to do is reframe your, yeah. your yeah. critical yeah. dates. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate it. What else um, we got? So, I don't know if you noticed, but there's little box boxes like you would use yes, for I check love boxes. That. Yeah. I love that. We changed that after a conversation an internal conversation when we were developing the agenda <sighs> um, like to indicate to people that there are things we'd like to talk about mm -hmm. on these particular subjects. Yeah. And I don't have and some a great deal to say about yeah. Yeah. It's great. A great deal to say about Stillwater except that I did reach out um, to Lisa to get the name of the person the group that she was thinking about. Mhm. Mm for, for surveying, the, yes. I haven't heard back from her, but okay. Chris, Chris, and Tim had a suggestion that I'm trying to follow up on. So, because keep in mind, I there were, there was this assumption that we would be able to get an article onto town meeting in the fall about yes the to fund the cost to take, We're gonna do need whatever to. eminent We're domain gonna, takings we, we, we have, have to, to do. We got to get that done. They, um, Lisa was concerned about the criteria to do the surveys, like what the, what exactly DOT is looking for, since we have to do everything to their standards. So we got to figure and this out And that's, that's what I mean. So that's a, that's a, okay. bring it to the top of the list. Yeah, for thing. sure. But yep. I did want to let you know that that is one of those critical items. Yes, So, sure. um, just a question on that. Uh, assuming that there are economy, you know, there's probably some economies to be achieved by Lisa working with somebody who knows the regs and who she's aware of and who's worked with before. I um, think there are. Are we able to say, look, let's work to, I mean, right. appraisals don't involve, it's not like engineering. If, if right. You hire an engineer, and a project's going to cost more than three hundred thousand. You have to do all these other things. Right. So I'm I'm perfectly happy to work with somebody who knows what the state regulations are. Um, so as soon as we can do this, I mean, at the next meeting we should yeah. plan to have this available to say yes. Because I know how appraisers are out several months. Yep. And. Uh, I would like to, you know, also remind, I suggested the appraiser that we're trying to do this for an October 7 special town meeting, which may be impossible at this point. Okay. Um, I'm just writing myself a note. So Blake, just, um, if there's a box, it means we want to talk about it. If there's a dot, it means we're, we're having that in case something drives up. So like, you know, permits and review for, and approval. There's nothing tonight, but right. if something did come up, we could talk about it. Yep. Um, whereas the boxes mean we're going to talk about it. Yep. Because I was getting confused. <laughs> There's too much on here. Too many placeholders. <laughs> All right. Speaking of placeholders. So I didn't check the Keller box. I know. I delayed yep. one meeting. So is there Would, more on Stillwater? Or you, not on Stillwater. Okay. Go ahead. So, special town meeting, I've had several requests for articles to be included. Um, open space is requested at least two articles, one for, one to put land in Article 97, which is conservation, which is restriction, mm -hmm. permanent restriction, 
and they had talked to you about this before. Um, Christopher, me, Cassie, we've been working with Lisa to try to coordinate that because there's a lot of stuff to dig into. Mm -hmm. One thing that is a problem is there's actually a set of town meeting minutes that are missing that are in the time period we were looking for. So we're trying to find an alternative path to get information. Absent that, um, we'll have to take another tack. Are, th are those the ancient things that are missing, or not the age? It's it's from 1951. I think. Oh, yeah, that's sorry. ancient to me. Yeah, there's a there's a, <laughs> not a book, block. So. It's like one book. Yeah, and it's been missing for a long time, but we can't figure out how to get it back because we don't know who had it. Um, so you would check with Bruce St. Peter's? No, but I'm going to check. <laughs> I'm going to check with someone else. Just teasing. Um, so I received that. We are going to have <clears throat> probably a CPC article. I'm planning for that. Um, a request to put a disposition of property um, for 83 to 85 North Main Street, which is the former St. James Church, has been sent. Um, I had a question about, someone mentioned to me a request for funding for the removal of materials on in Old Deerfield as a result of the 2023 storm damage. Mm -hmm. But we have no idea what that's gonna look like because a lot. it's gonna be a lot of money. So I don't, I'm happy to write, put a pl so placeholder. Let me back up and just tell Blake what a placeholder means. Basically people ask for articles to be put on the warrant. So what I do is I put a brief synopsis. I don't give it language or, unless I can find it. Um, I just put placeholders. This article you can expect. This article you can expect. So when people, when I send a notification out that a meeting has been set and the warrant is opened, that's when I start hearing back from people. So I've heard back from like six different people and one of those was about this funding to do removal of this material that was related to the storms. Um, but we, I guess, have to have DEP tell us what needs to be removed, right? They Is it did. DEP? They came through and uh, they all walked the property with Chief, and, and Chief's got a list of all the material that needs to be removed. Okay. I don't. We don't know how I much it's going to cost. I don't agree with it, but it's it's a lot. Well, uh, okay. I do know that the Chief had a couple farmers and Deerfield remove some of it okay, because good. they used it. Yeah. And I'm wondering okay. if there's some way we can reach out to some more of the farmers. To see if that because that stuff is you know it's it's, it's good probably soil. it's probably uh, um, best soil. nutrient enriched soil yeah, absolutely and a lot of them want it so absolutely it's good yeah so soil there. yeah that that's the uh, the question of finding a funding source or building it into the next year's budget I think right. is what so you do that. oh okay yeah, yeah I mean I actually would like to look to find a way to pay for it from existing so we don't carry it over but what happened was emergency steps were taken to create water flow and in digging out the debris was set next to where these were were, were dug and that land was in wetland and the DEP um, is requiring the the soil to be moved and placed elsewhere so this was an unanticipated cost of doing the work to mitigate the storm damage. Um, and we've been working to try and get it done for free. DA has taken a little bit of it and farmers, as right. Blake said. I, I think, and I think one of the problems was is that a lot of them couldn't get out there because the land was too wet. Yes. Right. I'm thinking that after the fall meeting, there might be, as the ground firms up, they can get out there before it completely freezes. And yep. get out there and get get it out of there. So again, some be something vegetation we, will be that, dried maybe up that's too something we can bring to the agricultural committee. To yes, see yeah. The, if they session. get back into session, um, and also the the um, DEP was um, willing to work with us about which things needed to be moved and which things didn't need to be moved. But there is still a significant amount of soil and yeah. uh, high anticipated cost if we have to pay for all of this removal work. Yeah. Um, but so. boy, has it worked well with all these all this rain. Man, it has flowed that water out. We have not had that rose wash out. I mean, it's been good. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
It worked. Sorry to interrupt, Casey. No, 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 it's fine. Um, so those are some of the things we can expect. Um, I do think you'll probably see... Oh, I would like to add one thing. Sure. So um, talking with the schools, we've done... Um, there was a Warren article last year to put... Um, continue to do the um, mini splits in the DES building and then each year they get a rebate back from Eversource or whatever program so they'll be getting a rebate back this year and it should be enough to cover the additional four units that need to get put in then that building is done um, so they're gonna check with um, Brenda and once Shelly and Darius come back from vacation before school starts, they're going to work with uh, Brenda hopefully and just get an answer. I think because the uh, money was funded in one year and happened in another fiscal year, the money actually has to go back to the town. And then so uh, an article that I would recommend would be um, to use free cash in fall to um, to pay for those four additional Which, units and then the rebate money comes back to pay for it. So. I think it's just kind of moving money depending on years, right. but that would be one but article. But that would that be would, a wash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would be an exactly, exactly wash Using the that. rebate yep. money to, that we've already you okay. know, done and then put that towards towards units. Right. So um, I talked to Bill Hildreth about that uh, this week, but he was going to be back in touch with Darius and Shelley when they got back. So that might be an article we might have. I'm not quite mm -hmm. sure. I'll yet. put it on the list. Yeah, just as a temporary. Okay. Is there anything else? The um, three of you have the, the main thing is what we're going to do with that uh, funding for the um, for the uh, outflow, you know, pipe. So we're going to hear in the next. I don't know if we'll hear by October seventh uh, whether we have gotten uh, a loan from SRF and what that all entails. So maybe just a placeholder at the moment, but it may be too late. You know, by the time that information comes to do anything with it. So you mean that we 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 might hear back from SRF that we're eligible for a loan? Exactly. Okay. And but that so. would be and which loan we're eligible for? Yeah. Yeah. How much and and how much you know what, what the we parameters of all with. that, and then okay. we'd have to bring it to town meeting for approval. Mm -hmm. I think, even though it probably get funded by, um, you know, sewer user fee, but it's still. I think we'd still have to bring it to town meeting. I'm not 100% sure, but I would, yeah. I would want to notify everybody yeah. anyway. Yep. So, right. Yep. Okay. Um, I will have prior year down bills there. on there just in case. When, um, the, when the river was low, I did walk down the other day to just kind of see what was going on. It's very much the same. Uh, I couldn't see the head wall in the river, even though it was pretty low. I know it's high now again, but... I just didn't see anything. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah, you're not going to see it for a little while either yeah, because we're going to get some serious rain the next yes. couple of days. I don't want serious rain. I'm sorry. I don't want serious rain. <laughs> no, right. I'm not going to go away. <laughs> no, I think we're going to. I've been asked to put a prior year Bill Warren article on there just in case we miss something because yep. there's Brenda always and a I bill. looked at each other the other day and we, we went. We're pretty sure we missed something. <laughs> yes, I think there are a couple items. So yeah. we we do the best we can, just so everybody knows, to catch all the bills, and we send reminders out. But often we miss something. So from now on, I think she wants to see an article like that. Um, so I have a placeholder for that. I am just finished. I'm just starting to develop the warrant, so I haven't gotten really the. I haven't removed everything. <clears throat> That we, use, that we had from last. I don't recreate the wheel. I use an old one and make it work. I copy and paste until the cows come home and so that it fits. Um, but I do know that we could hear from other committees uh, in the next couple weeks. So Kathy Sylvester from CPC will probably have a CPC article. Mm -hmm. um, I'll hear from her. Um, I may hear a little bit more from open space and I'm waiting to see if there's anything that comes in um, from energy because I don't know where all of their the things they want to do are so those are some of the things I'm just keeping in I keep a list it's a running list mm -hmm. once I start putting articles in you'll probably start seeing a draft warrant to look at, but I wouldn't expect that until at least the next meeting. Okay. So um, when you're done, I do have one item I want to talk about. Sure. So are you done? 
Or do you have I, them yeah, working? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I basically, I just wanted to thank um, Senator Comerford and, and uh, Representative Blay for their hard work on um, getting a state disaster relief and a resiliency fund into the budget. Um, it's been approved by Governor Healy. So um, there are going to be uh, conversations that uh, we're going to encourage um, Chief Pachorik and others. I'd like us to come up with some ideas about what we'd like to um, see brought into the conversation as this thing is formalized and funding sources um, set up, uh, ha having been you know, a poster child for why we need this. Um, I think, you know, our comments could be valuable to the state when they're thinking about this. But I did want to, I know Natalie and Joe really pushed on this and uh, um, they also pushed really hard for us to get uh, money for the, for the relief that we did get last year. And we keep talking to them and asking if we can, you know, still so we can get left. some money uh, for the 800 thousand whole but yeah. um, fortunately we did have other resources that we could yeah. tap I would like to replace them yes and we also have this two million dollar issue that uh, we might need to help out on for this sewer pipe right um, so we're always asking and we're thankful when we receive they've been very helpful to us for sure yeah rock stars yes um, that's it for me Next you like? I'm all set are we doing this letter thing or not? Um, which letter is that? The horse thing? No, we're going to no, hold we're gonna off on it because yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, Blake needs to get the, okay. some time yeah. to absorb it. The thing about Berkshire gas is that just, I think that's mail. It's mail, yeah. so you have two okay, items Okay, so we don't need to do anything. No. 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 Okay. But um, why don't it's you, just notification. When, yeah, why don't you just. I did add the DPU, so Tim sent me an email. It was a late addition. Mm -hmm. um, to your packet, it was an email about uh, a DPU filing for Eversource's community solar program, mm -hmm. right, Tim? Right. So basically, I wanted you to be able to see it. Um, Tim's asked members of Energy Resources to take a look at it. Um, this falls within the SMART program, which mm -hmm. is often what our municipal aggregation groups use, and it's also available. Some of the SMART program work is what we use, or what I guess both residents and governmental entities can use to lower, find ways to lower their energy costs. Mm -hmm. So he just, he wanted to make sure that he got some more input on it, so I thought you guys should read it. We can follow up um, and see what happens. Do, are we st we're still waiting here from um, Green this Greenblatt, right? On the yeah. So she and I have a solar. she. We have a meeting with Lisa. Um, it's been hard to get everybody yeah. in the same room. We have a meeting next Tuesday, I think, at two. Okay. We see set where we're that at up. That. Yeah, okay. because okay. there's some questions about what they've turned around and sent back to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Great. So that, I've been working on that. There's a couple of other things. Let me just go down this. MVP reports, there's some questions from Andrew Smith that I have to answer, but I won't have a chance to do it until tomorrow or Friday. Yeah. Um, personnel policies, I had a couple conversations. There's some things I'd like the board to consider at their next meeting. Um, and I haven't framed them. I'd, I'd at least like you guys to look at them. Um, the old Deerfield sewer lining project yeah. and installation of that portion of line yeah that yes. is proceeding i think they're is. starting think they're... the installation of the portion of line on the 8th right yes. which is tomorrow yeah this week they're hopefully getting that done because the, uh, the lining's done, done. And, so they uh, moved really fast they did. luckily the water was on the other side of the road the water line so we figured that out and then yeah they're getting they're rocking and rolling through that and then we should see funding from um different academy who, who funded that coming to us to pay the bills so okay. um, I sent a message to Jeff Galley he was looking for a total on that which was came in a whole lot less than we thought yes. so I think they're grateful because they have a bunch of other stuff that popped up that they needed some funding for too um, 
you know, that they had had approved. So it'll help them out. And uh, we're very grateful for their help funding what they did for us. Yeah. So. No, that's good. Yep. Um, I think a lot of people saw an email I sent out. We had another uh, Zoom bombing incident last week. Yes. So, so heartbreaking. Pat did a great job of, of she did. trying to contain it's everything. It's horrifying for her. It's, it's horrifying, horrifying for, for everybody. everybody. To, to be there and to see that disgusting stuff. It, I don't know. <laughs> And it's hard when you're when you're listening and doing in a meeting like I am right now. Trying to shut it down. Yeah. So what? One thing we did do. They, she and Amy did a lot of work, and I give them a lot of credit Um, because it it means as soon as something like this happens, we have to figure out how to respond. Yeah. So what they did was a lot of research to help us figure out how to suspend meetings, kick these people out, report them to Zoom, and bring things back online so that business can continue to be done by committees and I wanted to give a shout out to the both of them um, so that we could better handle this because there were some pretty anxious people after that meeting and that was the reason I sent the email out was to let people know that we've identified ways that we can control it to the extent that we can control it Um, and there were other people that I got information from so I changed a few of the settings so that we hopefully are in better shape Um, There's been a lot of questions from residents and um, committees. One question, we had a question from a resident, it was actually not for me, I just facilitated. Um, There was a question from a gentleman on North Hillside Road about uh, water that was running across the road into his property from another property owner. And Chris Miller went up and spoke to both the property owners and... Nice letter. It, yes, we received a nice letter from Mr. Nice. Stacy, who right. initially Very came grateful. in and identified it. Yep. Um, Chris met with Mr. Stacy, and he met with Mr. Austin, and they found a path to contain, you know, some of the issues around that water. So I think Mr. Austin's actually started the work. So I wanted to give yep. a shout out to Chris Miller for handling that. Yeah, he did a great job. Um, and so these are the types of things, and without a assistant town administrator there's things we're trying to keep up with and it's not happening as quickly as we would like but we're doing what we can yeah um there's some legal counsel connections that are happening because of conservation stuff litigation this is that landfill solar and some of these contracts it keeps christopher and i pretty busy um so those are some of the things that are identified i did not have a huge amount of time today to go back through and write my report in a better format because I was trying to deal with a lot of the paper that you see on your table. Um, So I apologize for that. Did you guys have any questions for me? Um, There was one thing in the the signature file that I wanted to follow up on this Zach's barbecue stuff. Should we we sign anything or should we? Okay. So um, Zach's barbecue, they did receive approval from the ABCC. Oh, great. We found out the other, I think it was Tuesday, no, Monday we found out. So what Pat did was she processed the license so it was ready for you guys to sign. The tips training that Mr. Langloy is going to have is next week. Great. So he's, after the tips training, he's going to bring the fee in. Great. And he'll pick up the license so that we'll know that that's done. That was a requirement that was discussed before in that first hearing. Yep. Um, so we want to make sure that, and, and Peter does too. Wants yeah. to make sure that you're aware that he's done that, and then he Appreciate can pay that. and pick up the license. Mm-hmm. We thought it would, since we had a little bit of time, we'd have you sign it That's instead great. of doing. Yeah. So um, we don't have to, we don't have to do anything on the tips page. We would have to sign in two places. Yes, on the, two okay. places. We keep one original for ourselves, and we give the other to the prop to the licensee. Okay. Well, does it get cut? Yeah. Yeah, we cut okay. it in half. <laughs> Finally, I understand why it's presented this way. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Kevin McDaniel, aye. <laughs> Gilmore, aye. Couldn't wait for my turn. All right, thanks. Thank you. Hey, Rocky, thanks for coming. Yeah.